Lindsay Moore, a health coach living in Spartanburg, South Carolina. My blog, Just a Little Organic, or Jalo for short, is where I share my passion for food, healthy living, and nature with friends and family. Now, thanks to Ingalls, I'm going to cook with you. I'm going to show you step by step how to bring some of my favorites to your kitchen table, like my delicious black bean quesadilla. Go to IngallsTable.com to find out more. I'll see you there. Okay, we're gonna start making our quesadillas, these black bean quesadillas, and I'm also gonna make a little side salad. Nothing special, just something green to go with the quesadilla. And we'll start by making the, the stuff that goes inside the quesadilla besides the cheese. So we've got a can of corn and a can of black beans, both drained, and then um, the Ingalls pico de gallo. So they, they make pico de gallo fresh that's really good. Or you can get your favorite salsa. It doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever you like best. Um, but you'll just give it a little stir and sprinkle in a little bit of salt and pepper. Not much. Maybe half a teaspoon. Maybe even a fourth a teaspoon. Because we're gonna it's gonna have a lot of flavor without salt and pepper. Okay, so just again give it a stir and we're gonna put, use a slotted spoon because sometimes you can get too much salsa or pico de gallo or water from the pico de gallo in the spoon. So use a slotted spoon and just scoop out a cup or so of your mixture onto each of the four tortillas. So I've got um, just, I, I have whole wheat flour tortillas, but you can choose regular flour tortillas if you like and just grab a piece of parchment paper or tin foil or aluminum foil and place it over a baking sheet. It's really just to protect your, you from having to clean it. And you just wanna get this mixture spread out onto, so it spreads out evenly onto the, onto the quesadilla. And, Typically, I actually put the cheese down first on the layers, and I just forgot just now. So uh, I'm going to put all the cheese on top, and it doesn't matter either way. But while you're making it, put the cheese on first, and then put these, and then put the mixture on. Okay, this looks good enough, and then just spread it out. Uh, so that it's not coming off the sides, but almost to each, to all sides. And you can add more if you need to. This one looks like it's got a little too much. You can use your hands, just spread it evenly. And then we'll go ahead and add our cheese. And I got the taco blend cheese. You can use whichever cheese you like, um, but I like this Mexican taco blend that Ingalls has. And I have exact measurements on the recipe, but really um, it's, it's less cheese than you need. You don't want it to be so cheesy that all you can taste is cheese because you have these great black beans and corn and this really yummy pico in there too. And the last one. And then all we're gonna do from here is top each one with another tortilla. Okay. And we'll add their tops. And I have the oven preheated to 400 degrees. And we'll put those in there just until everything melts and heats up. So about five to seven minutes. Just keep your eye on it. Okay, and then while these are cooking, we're gonna make a little salad just to go with the quesadilla so you have something that's not cheesy and maybe a little bit healthy. We're gonna do the vinaigrette right inside this bowl and we don't have to do anything else. We're just gonna do everything in this bowl. So we'll add the juice of two limes, an onion, so it's a red onion diced about 
a small red onion, so half of a big red onion. Just depends on how big. So that's like a half a cup, maybe a little less than half a cup. Some fresh cilantro. Olive oil. So this is a really simple vinaigrette, really simple, really simple way to add greens to a carb heavy, cheese heavy meal. A little bit of black pepper. Kosher salt. I really, I want, I want to get a whole half of a teaspoon here. Um, so don't be shy with the salt, but make sure you don't add more than half a teaspoon at first because you can always take it out. I mean, put it put more in, but you can't take any out. Give it a good stir. And then all you have to do is add in romaine lettuce. So I've, I've, I've chopped romaine lettuce into little inch pieces and I'll chop a little bit more. Just depends on how many people are eating the salad, how much you want to have. Um, a head or two will serve four to five people. It'll make a pretty big salad. All right, we'll just add this in and give it a stir and make sure you get all the way to the bottom and you can press the romaine all the way to the bottom, toss it and make sure it's coated and you can let this sit. I'm going to use my hands because I don't have another spoon and I'm at home. So toss with your hands or a spoon, make sure everything's evenly coated. Make sure you really get to the bottom because all of it's obviously sitting at the bottom. And it looks like our salad is done and ready to go. So we'll just let this sit and check on our quesadillas. All right, it looks like our quesadillas are done. You can cook them for longer if you like it more brown on top, but it's really preference. You just don't want them to burn, but likely they will not. Okay. So let them cool slightly and then we're going to transfer to a cutting board and cut into six wedges. You can use a pizza slicer or just a, a chef's knife, whatever you would like. And slide it right over and take your knife and just press firmly down in one direction and then the opposite direction. We'll have four slices. All right. And then we'll plate it up. So we've plated up our quesadilla with a big handful of salad and a dollop of guacamole. I use the Ingles, the kind they make in house. It's really, really good. I like the mild version. If you like hot, you can get spicy. Well, we're all out of time for today, but I want to thank you so much for joining us here at the Ingalls Table. Remember, you can find this recipe, videos, photos, and more on the website at ingallstable.com. Until next time, I'll see you online.